What's going on, family? Robert here. So the word exhortation, exhortation, it means to urge or to strongly suggest someone to do something, to urge or to strongly encourage someone to do something. And here in the text, Jesus is giving an exhortation to this previously paralyzed man, an exhortation that would change the outcome and the direction of his life going forward. It says in John chapter 5, verse 12, Then they asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest something worse come upon you. Sin no more lest something worse come upon you. So the man who was paralyzed for 38 years, he had been in a hopeless situation. He didn't feel like anybody could help us. He was in a helpless situation. But Jesus came to him in the midst of his suffering, his trial, and his tribulation. And he brought healing and wholeness. But in the midst of his healing and wholeness, when everybody should have been celebrating, he experienced Haters from the religious leaders and the Pharisees. Haters that interrogated him about why he was carrying his mat. But at the beginning of this text, it tells us in verse 12 that now they asked him, who was the man that told you to carry your mat? And unfortunately, the man didn't know. But sometime later, as Jesus found the man in the temple, going back to give God worship, giving, going back to praise God for what had happened to him through Jesus. Jesus met the man and says, I, I now see that you are made well. Go and sin no more, lest something worse come upon you. Now, I've heard a couple different understandings of this text. Some people believe that some sin was going on in this, this man's life. Some sin had caused him to be in this position for 38 years. And Jesus may have been saying that, hey, don't do that thing anymore and you'll be okay. But I heard a different interpretation of this text, a second interpretation of what Jesus could be saying here. He could be saying not just to go and sin in that specific way anymore, but to go and sin, to not sin at all anymore. I believe Jesus was telling this man not just to ignore one sin, but to turn away from sin completely and to turn his life to the Lord. That is the only way nothing worse would come upon him because his eternal destiny and his eternal security would be intact. This man had been paralyzed, had been stuck, had been in this position for an extended amount of time. He had been freed, but he wasn't free from the bondage of sin. Not until he repented turned away from that and turned to Jesus. And so I want to encourage us today that the Lord can deliver us from situations. He can deliver us from circumstances. He can deliver us from those things that may have us bound. But no matter what, if we don't turn to him and believe in his son, Jesus Christ, believe that he died on the cross for our sins, believe that he rose again on the third day, we are just trapped in another form of bondage. Something worse will come upon us. However, if we do believe in Jesus, if we trust him as our Lord and Savior, if we, as Romans 10, 9, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if we confess him with our mouths and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, the promise is that we will be saved. And I can promise you these words of Jesus will hold true that nothing worse will come upon us. Brothers and sisters, this, this man had a choice to go back to his old paralyzed ways or to turn and follow after Jesus. Now, the text doesn't record what he did, but the question is, what about you? Will you turn from your hopeless and helpless situation? Will you seek the Savior to help you? Will you ignore the haters and will you take his exhortation to heart to go and sin no more? 
I, I pray, I hope that you do. So with that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are an awesome God. And you've showed us through the story of this man that you care for the broken. Those who are in helpless and hopeless situations, you come to us. And you can provide the healing that we need. Now, though people may not like it, and they may hate on what you've done for us, allow us to carry your exhortation to heart, to not go back to the way we were, but to move forward and follow after you. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So thank you for studying with me. Come back for more daily devotions. God bless.